shot you, the asshole! I was talking to not just one, but several other people. Speaking of old people, uh, and mark the old captain's word, this is coming down the pipe. I believe this is going to be. And it's not, and it, it, I, would, I would like to say it's <clears throat> somewhat generational. It's not, but it, we're going to talk. Look, you women have got to get over material things. You really do. And I'm not talking buying crap, and I know it, you're, I'm asking, you know, talk about things you don't control. Uh, but I've ran into now asshole consulting in a couple other places uh, personally where the, the female, the matriarch, the old lady, uh, she wants to stay in the house. And if you think I'm specifically talking about, you know, there's been multiple people that this is like, I finally got the straw that broke the camel's back where there was yet another instance of this. And the reason I'm bringing it up is because when we're talking about things like a house, that's what we're talking about, is the old woman wants to stay in the house that the dad or the father or the patriarch built. And it is not only an impediment to young people advancing and moving on in their lives so that they too might build their own house, and it, <clears throat> but it is obviously a house is a huge, if not the single largest asset usually somebody owns. And if you mismanage it, it's also the single largest liability that somebody owns because usually there's a mortgage attached to it or a reverse mortgage or something like that. And I cannot emphasize enough, you look at housing, that is the single largest expense in your life. You want to minimize it. If there is a silver bullet to personal financial management, it is minimizing your living expenses over the entire course of your life. All right, if you can minimize your rent expense, uh, you minimize, or your, your lodging expense, you minimize the single largest expense that most people have in their life. Until Obamacare, which now is health care in many instances where the health insurance premiums cost more uh, than people's mortgages. But historically speaking, and still speaking to a majority of people, housing is the number one expense. Uh, and if you can minimize that, you make things a lot easier. So you live with roommates, you live in a van, you, you, you only have a studio apartment, whatever. Again, life is out there, life is not in the home. Now, when you have kids, this career, or you raise a family, this throws a curveball at this otherwise simple and minimalistic principle. Now you need a larger home. Now it is economically advantageous to you to get an actual house. And so the only time I think that you should actually have a house, uh, unless it's rental property or you have it paid off in cash or whatever, you got to steal it. The only time you really have to have a house <clears throat> is when you're raising children. And presumably, hopefully, ideally, in the nuclear family, 1940s, 1950s, evil right, racist, male, sexual, homophobic, uh, sexist, misogynist world, you would be employed reliably in the same area for the same amount of time that you would stay in this house raise all your children, and then these children, as they got older, would evacuate and go on, and then continue living their own lives, blaze their own trail through life. But then, once the last kid is out, basic simple economic principles, and a lot of people know this isn't anything that, that old captain has a secret, a lot of people know this, is they scale down. They downsize. And then they sell the house, which over what? If you have a kid and you don't fuck up, and you don't get married at minimum 18 years, if you have multiple kids, that's two decades, okay, the house probably appreciated in value, you've made a significant dent into the mortgage, the mortgage should at least be mostly paid off by that time, you sell that for a huge capital gain and a huge windfall, you buy yourself a small little condo where you don't mow or shovel somewhere down south in a tax-free state, and then you take the lion's share of the remaining money, and then that makes a... It, it's perfect timing. It's perfect fucking timing. Now you got this huge nest egg that you can invest wherever, maybe buy another rental, but whatever. Right about the time you're coming up on retirement, maybe you got it a couple 10 years, maybe you invest in a 401k, whatever. And then all of a sudden you have a much smaller place, less time, less maintenance. That's key to personal financial management. A lot of people don't think about the time. They're all about the dollars. They don't think about the time. And then uh, all of a sudden you're 65 or 70, 
You and Gertrude, you're sitting there in there with your landline phone, obviously, for Karen, my buddy Karen. <clears throat> and then you just live the next couple of years till you're dead. And then if you, if, you, if you downsize, you get rid of the biggest, single, largest expense while also selling the big, biggest, single, largest asset, your retirement should be a breeze. Oh, no. Enter in female psychology. More than once, more than twice, more than thrice, and I don't know what the fourth version of once, twice, thrice is, quats. I've seen this many times, which means we're going to have to address it here, where either the wife or the mother decides she's going to stubbornly bivouac and hold her guns. It's my house. I have so many memories, memories, things of the past, things that are done and over with. And I know, I know, Aaron, Cappy, You're an evil, right-wing, cold-hearted bastard. Everything is dollars and cents to you. No, 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 no. Because I'm a realist as well. What this is doing now, it is crippling at minimum a husband and a wife's retirement. I know at least two couples where this is happening. The husband is still around. It's uh, They're living in this big palatial mansion they don't fucking need. And there's old the hubster. The hubster, you know, he's approaching retirement age or is in retirement age, and he can't go and hustle like he used to when he was in 20s, 30s, and 40s. He maybe wants to relax a little bit. They're making him, God almighty, they're making the poor bastard go out and shovel snow. And then they, you know, and then, oh, white Herman died. I don't know, lady. Maybe, maybe he would have lived another 10, 15 years if instead of shoveling out in minus 5 degree weather, slipping and breaking his hip on the ice, making him a perma cripple. Maybe if you moved down to fucking Arizona or fucking Florida and sold your fucking estate, that that poor old man, that old workhorse, I mean, come on, let the workhorse retire a little bit. Let him go bathe in the sun. No, but, but you see, see, the wife needs to have that house. Why? Because there are memories. There are ghosts there that she wants to live in the past, which I'd say is a psychological problem. While usually, usually torturing and damaging the poor rat bastard of a husband that's going and got to go maintain the place as if he was 27. But you switch the numbers around, he's 72. No wonder men die before women. So then the money's not coming in. And any number one of a problem of things can happen here. The old man wants to retire. Now money's tight. And yeah, you may have that house paid off, but you know those good old Democrats and liberals, nothing's too good for the children. So your property taxes jack up. A lot of old people, a lot of widows. Oh, the ones that never got fucking trained by their husbands. I run into this all the time. Well, I got to take this class because my husband always did the finances. But I want to keep the house. The tax, they say I got to pay taxes. I thought we owned it. They don't pay the taxes. The tax man coming. There's a lien put on the house. Old Gertrude's kicked out. Because no one was there to pay. The husband never trained the wifey on the, on the finances. What else? Oh, the house goes into disrepair. The husband can't keep up. And the worst, the worst possible situation, I've seen it, it, a couple close calls. The old man goes out. The old man's out there on slippery ice patches, slips and what, you know, at that age, your hip goes, you are gone. You are dead. That is a death sentence. A slow, miserable, crippled, painful death sentence. But you see, the wife got to keep the house. She got to stay where all the memories were. The other one, which is where I've seen it on Asshole Consulting multiple times, is it is the son or the daughter, and then the mom or the grandma in some cases, I had one with the grandmother, where not only do they want to stay in this house, and they don't got money, they don't got money coming in. Oh, they might have received some inheritance. Oh, they might have survivor wealth, not welfare, <clears throat> social security. Uh, and even if they are able to make the payments, they can't maintain the home because the husband did all this stuff. They ain't going to stay in the house. And not only do they want to stay in the house, they don't want their kids moving out of town. I'll be lonely. Hey, come down to Florida. Come down to Arizona. Come down to Phoenix. Come down to Texas. No, I have so many memories here. Your father and I built this house together, and I'm going to... Well, fuck you, Grandma. 
Just fuck you then. Not my grandma. My grandmas were actually smart. But they they moved on. They oh yes, I had memories here. But then they both scaled down, moved to small little apartments. Very happy. They, well, okay, both were reasonably financially astute. But this is look. If you millennials and Gen Xers don't have enough problems already financially between mortgage debts, the financial crisis, your student loans, now you're going to have your fucking grandma or your parents all of a sudden, oh, I want to stay here. I want to stay here because I get the memories. I understand you love your parents or your grandparents. I understand that. But by God, I got one client. I, I can't give details. The grandma, like, how can I put it without giving too many details? The grandma, who no doubt is a loving, wonderful grandma, loves her grandchildren and wants her grandchildren to be there with her. And obviously when you grow up with the right type of grandma, you're going to love your grandma. But then it's like, when does love stop and greed and selfishness take over? Now she's demanding not demanding, but saying, well, you should come over and live with your grandmother in this shithole, an absolute shithole of a northern city. I won't mention which, but it's it's one of the shittiest shitholes of all northern shitholes that ever shat. And she wants this kid who is living in a tax-free warm state who's got his career to go up, oh, live with your grandmother. Oh, don't you love your grand? Fuck you, grandma. I do love you, but you know what? I love myself. And, and the economist in me, who is more pro-life, not in an abortion sense, but, but pro-life, pro-living, pro-life, knows that the time of grandmother is over. The time of the grandchildren has come. And for these old people to either out of selfishness, greed, or ignorance, or stubbornness, I admit there's, there's probably not, there's not a malicious intent on the part of these people, to say, hey, the rest of you kids, put your life on hold, or or I want you to handicap and cripple your life, and therefore your future, so I'm not fucking lonely. And no, by the way, no, I'm not going to leave the house because you have memories here. I don't care if the whole family files for bankruptcy. I want to stay here with it. This is where you got to like, let's just, how many times, guys? What have, you, what have you learned about women? Related to you or not, romantically interested or not, take the lessons that you've learned from women when you've dated them. What do you got to do with them? You got to draw the fucking line and you got to tell them the word that they love and hate both at the same time. No!